Welcome to another unboxing video from theplayersaid.com. I'm Grant. Uh, I'm a little bit intimidated by this game and this entire system. We had an opportunity a couple of years ago to get the World at War reprint. I think it was, what, 2017 or 2018, and, and we passed. Um, huge game. Very, very intimidating from my perspective. Lots of rules. Very specific complicated, complex. I'm trying to come up with all these words that explain my fear. Um, not that I'm a wimp, but the A World at War system is an amalgamation, I think, of a couple of different Avalon Hill games over the years, and it's all merged into this A World at War system that is really beloved. I, I know I see a lot of people talk about it online. Uh, a couple of people I know in, in the Wargamers group play this all the time. They play it every year at War, uh, WBC. It's a system that I would love to learn, but I'm going to be honest, I'm not sure my pea-sized brain uh, can, get, can get all the way around it. But there is a, I think in 2015, there was a prequel, and you'll notice, sorry, you'll notice on the box... This says prequel to A World at War. So around 2014 or 2015, GMT Games released a prequel to A World at War called A Gathering Storm. And it focused typically only on uh, the European theater and really not the entire European theater because the reality is the game is kind of a, well, it's exactly what it says it is. It's a prequel. It's a build up to the major fighting that started in World War II to in, in and around 1939. But that game, A Gathering Storm, deals with everything from 1935 to 1939, the buildup. You do deal a little bit with units and movement, and uh, you have some economic actions and some political actions. So it's a very interesting game. So now they've come along. That one just covered, uh, you know, Europe. They've now come along with this storm over Asia, which also very cleverly named prequel to A World at War. So this is the Pacific Theater prequel that basically starts in 1935 and goes up to 19, I think it's, uh, you know, the other game, A World at War, starts in 39. So it presumably is, is all the buildup towards that kickoff. Uh, the interesting thing about this game is the United States really isn't a playable faction. I think they have some some role in it, obviously, but you know, as we all know, they didn't come into the scene or onto the end of the battle until the attack on Pearl Harbor in 41. So this one really just has the British, uh, the British, the Chinese, and the Japanese. Um, I think it also might have Russia. Uh, but it, it doesn't include the United States, which is something that I don't know we've seen a lot of in World War II games, but once again, this is too early. So yeah, there you go. Storm Over Asia, prequel to A World at War. Game design is by Bruce Harper, and this is from GMT Games. Very, uh, very cool cover. You know, it looks like Roger McGowan's work, but I know that Hot Design, which is a company, has done that work. Let me see the credits on the back. I think they mentioned that. Yeah, map art. You can see there. Art director is Roger McGowan. But counter art, map art, component art, package design, and logo is a hot design mix with Roger McGowan, Bruce Harper, Charlie Kibler, and Mark Simonich. So, yeah. But very nice looking cover. I like it. It's very, to me, it's very cool. Really gets the feel of what's going on. I, I believe, you know, obviously doesn't cover everything, but it does cover elements of uh, of some of the players. I think this is maybe Chiang Kai-shek, and, and here you've got uh, obviously some Japanese uh, leadership. But yeah, very cool cover. I think it's very cool. I, I'm really intimidated by this game. Did I say that a minute ago? I actually broke this open a couple of days ago and started looking through the rules, and man, there's a lot of rules. Uh, you'll see that here when we open this in just a second, but I really want to learn this game. I've committed to Alexander that I'm going to try to learn this as best I can. 
so that we can play this prequel if we enjoy it, which I expect we will. We would love to maybe get a Gathering Storm and then possibly uh, give a shot to a World at War. I don't know that we have a spare six months to do that, but we'll give it our best shot. We'll see how it goes. Uh, so anyway, let's go ahead. And this is a two-inch box, as you can see, so it's not one of their really big ones. But it is the more sturdy variety of those two-inch boxes, where they're kind of double-walled, reinforced, uh, very protected. This is a hardy, hardy game box. So you'll notice when you when we open the box, you can see there's a bunch of rules. So there are literally three rule books. One, two. And I say rule books. I think that this is the main rule book. Storm over Asia, rules of play. Ha, ha, ha. You can see uh, it's, it's kind of matte finish, but it does have full color. There's color, you know, so there's colored counters, black and then yellow. Lots of cool pictures, but very dense, very involved. Uh, here you can see some of the full color diplomatic sequence. Uh, global game and that is one thing about this prequel is you can play through the prequel and there's actually a pad let me go ahead and I think it's right here I was reading online trying to better understand here's a pad that has kind of and these are tear off sheets that you're going to have to get photocopied as you use them I'm going to be honest if we get through playing this game one time or three quarters of a time I'd be amazed. We are going to make copies of it because I don't want to not have them. Um, but part of the, the reason you use these sheets is that you're tracking the state of the game so that when you come to the end, presumably around 1939, you've tracked everything that you've done and then you can translate or transfer everything in this game over to a world at war as you pick up uh, that that full game. So back to the rule book. I don't think I was looking at it. I didn't see see pages. Yep, there's no page numbers, which is odd, especially for a rule book that's th that that is this thick. It is case. So here you can see sixty one point four other effects. If that gives you an insight into what this is, there's a lot of rules. But yeah, there's no page numbers, which is concerning. I don't know that it's that big of a deal. There is a very small uh, kind of table of contents, but once again, it's not it's not page number related. So you've got to kind of dive through there. There is, you can see the United States. So they obviously are involved, but they are not directly a playable faction. But anyway, this rule book, I'm going to guess it's about 50 pages. That would be my guess. So anyway, there's the rule book. And then you've got, now here's the rule book. That's the transition, what I just showed you. Here's the rule book. This appears to be about 60 pages. Very similar. There are no numbers on these pages, which is a little, it's just odd to me. But you make a huge book like this, you'd think you would put numbers on the pages. But maybe it just slipped through. Um, but yeah, so there's the rules of play. I showed you the transition, so the way to get from your game onto a full game of a World at War if you have a spare six months. And then this is a battle manual. I assume it includes examples of play. Let's go ahead and take a look at it. Ooh, these are really cool pages. Looks like there are reference notes for every counter that's used in the game. Well, that's pretty cool. That's interesting. I don't know that I've seen a lot of stuff like that. But yeah, it looks like there's notes on units and counters. That ends after about seven or eight pages. And then you've got an entire couple of pages here on random events that come up. So very historically based, very, very founded in those historical happenings, which is good. You can learn. One of the reasons I play these war games is to learn. Uh, here you've got an insert or a section that's called inter-theater rules. So my guess is that somehow coincides with a gathering storm and storm of Asia, either working storm over Asia working together, or this is something else that I'm missing. And then you've got a couple of pages of historical notes. So the battle manual does not contain an example of play, which is a little disappointing as well. 
I would think a game of this depth would would have something like that. But oh well. So there you go, guys. Three rule books. You are looking at probably 150 page, 140 pages worth of rules. So there's a lot of reading to do. I'm going to get some good markers out. I'm going to highlight those. And I know that may be sacrilege amongst many of you. But if I don't highlight sections, then I get lost. And I also forget sometimes what I what it is that I've read. Uh, there are about 840 counters. So there are five counter sheets here, you can see. Some of them are just administrative counters. Here are Japanese units. There are other counters there with associated with Japan. I, I wish I could tell you more, but I, I don't know more, frankly. Nice looking counters, though. They're small counters. There you have all the Japanese naval counters. The Zuikaku, the Koryu, the Shinano, Yatagarasu, whole bunches. And I'm, I'm assuming with the economic rules, you're going to commit to building certain ones of these, put them out on the board, and that's why you ultimately can come up with kind of an ahistorical or different than history, not necessarily ahistorical. Um, might just be a little bit different. So yeah, here's another sheet of counters. These appear to be, well, some of these are locations, some are cities. Yeah, I, I, you know, I'm, I'm just not sure. I'm not familiar with the rules or the system. This one appears to be a lot of, here's some British units there. And then you've got some administrative counters there. You've also got some Japanese units up at the top. So once again, 840 counters. These are big counters. I don't know if these are tracking counters or those appear to be maybe commanders. So anyway, and then you've got a bunch of numbers. So uh, five sheets of counters, which equates to, I believe, 840 plus counters. So that's a lot. Let's go ahead and make some room here. I'm going to go ahead and I apologize. My, my house is a little noisy this morning. They are not uh, being cautious about what they're saying or doing and just walking around like a bunch of barbarians as I'm recording a video. So here I wanted to show you the map. And it's not a hex encounter map, which may not be a surprise to many of you who understand this game and know what it's about. But here's a look at the map. I've got it splayed out there. It actually appears to be, <clears throat> there's kind of boxes. So there are boxes in the different areas where it appears that you're going to be staging your troops as you develop them and buy them and build them. You're going to display those here. And then you've got... Uh, 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 other things here, you've got boxes, your time track, and I think that your different units are going to be stacked in there as you develop them. You, you can put them onto the board. You've got the economic climate here at the bottom. So it's an interesting map. I, I'm not sure I understand what it is that I'm looking at here until I do a little more research, but it's nice looking. It's a big map. There's only one single map. There's not two or three which probably keeps the complication level down. So there's the map. Uh, you can see it mainly focuses on, on China. China's kind of right at the center um, with French Indochina, Thailand, Burma here, and then India to the left. Uh, I'm not doing a geography lesson here. You know that. Japan's in the upper right, the Philippines, and then the vast Pacific is that way. So yeah, interesting looking map. Um, don't know that it's, let's go ahead and throw the, throw the counters back there just so they're not, they were falling on the floor. There are also a bunch of cards. I'm not sure what these are, so I apologize. Some of them appear to be uh, player aids. So here's the diplomacy sequence of play, which is uh, probably very, very helpful. And then you've got some different economic setup. Here's a setup player aid that helps you understand how you're going to set up. So there's that. And then it looks like you have your tracking for your income level, Russia, Britain. Um, here you have China on its own. You have Japan. So these are tracking charts that are going to show their support level and income level. 
as well as their production. So if you like a lot of you know, economic activity in your games, I think this game's gonna be very interesting and should be, yeah, these are fronts. I, I don't know what these are front cards. I don't know if they're like setup cards that will help you, but those are a little bit different. I already showed you the player aid. Um, you have two of them, sorry. There, another one here was buried. And then you've got another pad of paper. They seem to be stuck together, but there's that, that play aid. And then you've got a pad of paper that tracks your research. And if you look, it's very cool. If you look down here, you can see all the different types of research that you can do. Jets, so aircraft obviously at the top here, air range, strategic bombers, air defense, transports, naval air training, carrier design, battleship design. And then they're gonna give you these bonuses. And I think those coincide now that I look at this a little closer with the counters in your box. Here you got armor upgrades, rockets, specialized units, economic preparation. You got some atomic research, radar. So I'm, I'm going to be honest, this game looks very interesting. It looks very involved. I like a good involved game, but I also like it to be playable. And I'm I, the jury's still out on that one because I, I'm just not sure um, whether this game is really that easy to pick up and many of you out there who have played a world at war may be saying to me oh grant you're you're committing sacrilege right now because the game really isn't that difficult i hope that's the case but you know when you have 100 pages plus of rules it kind of makes it intimidating for me anyway uh here are some of the cards these are all random events remember that random events sheet that we looked at in the battle book I don't know how these function, but you can see there's a lot of different writing. Things happen to the different nationalities. There you have a Russian, Chinese, and Japanese. I don't see any of these with a British flag on them. There, there we go. Just uncovered some. So yeah, these are the random event cards. Obviously, things happen that's going to you know, affect your economy, hurt what, you, what it is that you're doing or trying to do. And then you've got to use those in, in connection with your research, which, you know, is cool to me. I, I enjoy a game that in, incorporates those elements. This next, uh, this next pack of cards has a couple of different types. You have warlords. Let's turn that over. So these are obviously Japanese leaders. Uh, they don't appear to have any text or, or, you know, what bonuses. Maybe those are contained in the rule book. But there you've got six or seven of those. And then you also have random event categories. So let's go ahead and flip one of those over. Random event diplomacy. So I don't know exactly how those are used. You then have purges. Obviously this is involved with the Soviets. No purge effects this turn. So let's look at one that says what the purge effects are. Party purge, research and diplomatic expenditures prohibited. So you're spending your time punishing, cleaning out your party. You don't have time to invest. Here's some more random events. So obviously you can see there's about maybe 70 cards, 75 cards that are random events. And then the rest are some of those warlords, purge cards, etc. So those are the, uh, those are the components for the game. I I'm going to go ahead and stop here because I feel like I'm, I'm probably just talking out my you know what because i really don't know that i understand fully what this game is about what it all involves but i'm i'm gonna make this commitment i told alexander this i'm very interested in playing this system especially if this is an introduction to the greater a world at war system i'd like to learn this i'd like to understand how to play it i'd like to have a good time with it we enjoy the pacific theater and I'm, I'm looking forward to at least trying this out. So there you have it, Storm Over Asia, a prequel to A World at War from GMT Games. I hope you've enjoyed the unboxing. Maybe you can give me some comments or suggestions or thoughts in the, in the comments about what I, what, I'm not, what I don't know what I'm talking about or what I said that was wrong. I'm fine with that. I'm open to suggestions. So... Let me know, but I'd love to get this clipped and ready to play, hopefully uh, soonish. And Alexander and I might try to have, 
have a good time. So there you go. Thanks for watching.